If there is a message for us today, I believe it is to learn to live from our heart in love. These short lessons, hopefully, will help to inspire you to live with purpose, love passionately, and inspire others. We are the change agent our world needs. I'm Helen Taves. Step into the river today with me to explore the mysteries of God. They are not hidden from us, but for us to discover. All right. Yeah, so welcome, everybody. Uh, Susan, every time somebody says, I've got a great uh, testimony, I always like it when we can record it at the beginning of a meeting. So that's what we're doing here. All right. <clears throat> Susan, are you there? You're you're muted. You're muted. Yep, I got it. Okay. Do you mind sharing well, I, on and recording nope. on, on the recording? Okay. That's fine. All right. Um two weeks ago, I had just gotten home from Florida and my daughter had been very sick while I was away. And she had been um her body had just been overrun with a very severe rash. They thought it was shingles, but that wasn't it. And they had to biopsy her. And there was just a, a perfect storm of things. She was uh, had just had COVID three weeks before. And she was in just a terrible state and could she'd been wrapped in a jersey sheet and naked for since Sunday until Wednesday night. And she had not been able to barely eat. She was just a mess. And we had an intention for her. And I went to see her on Thursday morning and she pulled the sheet back and from her hips to her ankles, the rash was completely gone. Her, she still had nerve pain and she still had discomfort, but the, the looks of the rash were completely gone. Her skin was just clear. Her feet were um, still very swollen and red and they hurt and her arms and, but she was, she just was so relieved. She felt like she was seeing that she is, was going to get better. She hadn't been feeling like she was even going to ever get better from it. She was so discouraged and, and just so depressed about it as well as in terrible pain. So I just wanted to give you all the thanksgiving for joining me and for agreeing and for intending because boy, oh boy, did that work. It was, it was just amazing. And the uh, pathology on her biopsy came back last Monday. She went for her checkup and nothing showed on the biopsy at all. There was not a single positive reaction. They had tested her for, um, I think th they were looking for something on the herpes spectrum and they tested her for nine different things on there and they all came back negative. So the, the, Dermatologist said, I've never seen anything like this. And she said, that has to be a miracle because I, it, as bad as that was, she said, I didn't know if you would ever get better or how long it would take. And that was just a miracle. So then I want to add another bonus on that. On Thursday night, I went, um, I'm on an Ascension group Thursday night. And after our Ascension group, we prayed again. And I went to see her Friday morning. And from her armpits all the way down to her ankle, all of the rash was gone. So all that was left were her arms and hands and her feet. And by Monday, when she went back to the dermatologist, that was when the dermatologist said, this, you know, this has to be a miracle because I've never seen anything that bad get better this quick. Well, isn't that just so outstanding? Like, I, I am absolutely... Um gobsmack like that is so yep. so amazing because it did feel impossible when you described it it really felt uh like yeah otherworldish right <laughs> i love it, it. felt I, overwhelming and yeah. i thought oh my goodness you know this will have to be god and all god because yeah. you know there's there's not a little space we can see where there's an opening here but it was awesome and they have no idea what it was like have no idea Nope. They, the doctor, the, her dermatologist has been in business for about 20 years. And she said she had never seen a rash like that, that was so involved all over the whole body. Right. 
and but she's my daughter's been under some terrible stress from a lot of different stressors and it was just the perfect storm and you know just took her down so it has it was just the greatest praise report to see her and she was the we the, she went back to the dermatologist on monday and went then back went back to work on tuesday she was able to go back so it was it was just glory to god complete complete glory to god yep yep well, how about everyone just joining me because uh many of you were in the first intention and we just like to say father thank you thank you we are yes, so god. grateful for your goodness for your faithfulness mm -hmm. we just want to thank you father that you mm -hmm. do what man can't you go you go beyond yes. our knowledge beyond our understanding beyond 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 and yes. we're so grateful and father i thank yes, you Lord. for the blessing mm -hmm. of this healing this miracle mm -hmm. happened. and we mm -hmm. just thank you thank you father yes lord thank you mm -hmm. wow 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 well thank you for sharing that, that is well, thank you for th thank you for helping me have something to share well <laughs> i think it was totally our unity and totally our oneness on that 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 caused that to happen well, I agree. I agree. I, and I, I also I also feel like we're we're in a, a stream of consciousness that we are more and more and more aware of a, mm -hmm. how we cooperate with Father on things. Like we, he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to dream big, think big, nothing, think unlimited. Nothing's impossible, and. Uh, uh, th this is really encouraging I mean, it just blesses our hearts right when you uh, and especially i love it especially when a doctor will say there it wasn't because of medicine right it, the glory goes to god and that's so great thank you thank you so much and give your daughter a hug for us Oops, hold on um i need to also share that the doctor had given her medicine and was not at all sure it was going to work but right. my daughter was taking it and then she said I, she wanted her on steroids and my daughter said she didn't want to take them because they make her so sick and anxious and you know the racing heart and all of that so the doctor said well if it's not better you have to take the steroids so she showed the doctor and the doctor did not give up on the steroids she wanted her to still take them so my daughter went and she said, all right, she said, I will, I'll take them. But she said, I don't, you know, I don't want to. She made that really clear. So by the time she got around to getting the prescription and everything else, she really was healed dramatically. Right. But she is still on the steroids because she does, you know, she does take her doctor's advice. She said, she's been my dermatologist for a while. I'm going to, I'm going to follow her instructions because I want her to be there for me if I need her. So I, I do need to add that caveat. She was, you know, she did take some steroids, but it was after she had had the um, the rash disappear on the trunk of her body and her legs. Right, right. Well, re whether there's drugs or not, drugs don't heal, God does. That's just sort of how I, I feel. I keep my focus on that because these things are way beyond us, really. That's so great, so great. That's awesome. Does anyone else have anything that uh, that you'd like to share? How are we doing? Okay, Yolande, you're there. Nice to see you. Hi, Donna, Kate, Elizabeth, Giselle, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. You're having fun in your um, in your uh, God Squad, I hear. You're yeah, we're having a we're having a good time. Um, I really love these ladies, and I feel like I'm they're just a treasure. Yeah, that's that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Well, I am really really happy to see everybody tonight, and uh, um, we've had we've had a great time chatting in our in our time bef before the meeting, <clears throat> and. One of the one of the things that uh, I, I had mentioned is 
that I feel like we are in a really, really, really crazy time in history. And, and actually is really serious. It's a very serious time. So I am Paul, I'm not going to apologize totally. I'm going to, I guess I put myself on speaker view here. How's that? Just for the uh, pin. There we go. I don't want to apologize for, for what I'm going to uh, share tonight, but I, I know that we're not all on the same page with some of the things that's going on. We have different interests in, in uh, what is, you know, what's in the news, what's not, how much is relevant, how much of it is associated with, with what we understand. And uh, tonight, because, because there, actually my son, Bob, brought something to my attention a, few, a number of weeks ago now and I'm going to share it with you. Uh, and I think you'll see why I think it's really serious. But then we're going to see see uh, what I believe is an answer to it that that we can can be part of, that we need to be part of, and especially for our own well-being in it. So you you if you haven't heard about what I'm going to talk about, you will. Uh, a number of mon months ago now, I brought up in one of the uh, lessons, some of the technology in our time that that I felt was a very serious concern, like, uh, and I talked about artificial intelligence a bit. I showed you, we had a little bit of a PowerPoint, I showed you Rosie the robot that was so programmed, she was human-like, and that she actually spoke at the UN. And I talked about the robotics that are in some of the countries that actually, uh, they, in Japan, there, there are people that are legally marrying their robot if you and there are childless couples that that have robots for children that with art, artificial intelligence it's really crazy in our world i don't think we know anyone who's married a robot yet but uh, we do know also about crispr the dna gene editing process for humans and it it's actually an over-the-counter uh, kit that you can buy in Japan. And, and these things seem like they are way over there, right? They're things that are happening in other cultures and think, well, what is, what's that got to do with it? But right now, there's something that's even, I think, more, more terrifying. And that is uh, an artificial intelligence computer program called Chat G. P T. I, I, do you know? Has anyone heard of that? Um, I don't want you to blank out on me, but I, I'm going to tell you about it because it's it's um, artificial in, intelligence that is going to affect every aspect of our lives. And it was launched two and a half months ago as a prototype. Actually, November 30, uh, 2022. And the company evaluation now is estimated at $29 billion. So what you're hearing has only been in effect for two months. This is, this is how fast things are moving. And uh, it's, it's a company called, or it's a, it's a, um, uh, a, a program called CHAT GPT, and it stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. This it's a computer program that you can ask a question to and request a response from it. The core function of it is to mimic a human conversation. For example, you can ask it to write an essay on a chosen subject, or you can ask it to compute, com, uh, compose music. You can ask it to write a fairy tale. You can answer test questions, you can create poetry, you can write song lyrics, you can play games like tic-tac-toe. So when when Bob showed me the, the potential of this, we, we I, I was at his house, he, Bob, as you know, puts all our things together for the River 474 uh, website, and he was showing uh, me because he had this, this uh, program on his computer, he has a friend of his in, um, 
in Spain is at the cutting edge of, of what's happened. And he said, Mom, this is scary. This is really scary. He asked, Elizabeth, are you there? Sorry, you, I have to see your hand. Sorry, Helen, it's, it's actually Todd. I couldn't get to the mute button fast I, enough. I, I have know. heard about this. And yeah. um, actually, Connor talks about it in college. He's our son at Texas A&M. Students okay. are already using it to cheat on yeah. papers and exams. And it'll even write a full code program that they yeah. have to turn in. Yeah, yeah. So it's already been adopted that quickly. I know. Uh, isn't uh, thank you for sharing that because I, I was wondering how long it was going to take uh, like not a minute not a minute to get into the schools and there and there we have the problem well that's part of the problem I when when uh, Bob Bob and I were looking at it Bob says listen to this he's he he asked the computer to write uh, uh, lyrics to this to a subject that he gave it to the tune of Beverly Hillbillies. And within, are you ready? 30 seconds, he had the song, all the courses, the in rhyme, in, in rhyme. We asked to give it uh, information on a topic. And then Bob said, but write it as a Dr. Seuss children's book. It did, took 30 seconds to get to him. I asked it to write a 30 word essay, a 500 word essay on heart brain coherence because it's something I'm really familiar with, right? So I will know if they're right or wrong or what, what's happening. And it was a rough, it was rough, but it was accurate. It's not, however, always accurate. And that's what, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, talk more about what Todd's um, talking about as well. In, that in, was version two. That was so version, we're on version four today, or I know. five coming up. Version, so it's yeah, yeah, and version four just came out yesterday. Is however, the program's not all, always accurate. For example, uh, it accepts the premise of the prompt: "Tell me about Christopher Columbus that came to the U.S. in two in 2015 as being truth true." Now, the, the, the program will acknowledge that all the facts are not correct, but will frame an answer as a hypothetical consideration of what might happen if Columbus came to the U.S. in 2015, using information about the voyages from Christopher Columbus and the facts about modern world and all that kind of thing. And I, like Todd said, his son, and people are, well, I don't know if his son is using it for, for, for so-called cheating, but here's that's the there there's the downside it it makes fiction sound like truth and right now this ai has limitations right and it's but it'll sometimes write plausible sounding but incorrect nonsensical answers and it has limited knowledge of events that occurred after uh 2021 but guys it's catching up fast i i researched it this morning best i could and it's absolutely frightening the level at the level of speed that this program is teaching itself from the input of the people using it the the uh, version five that i'm i i'm talking about now is not allowed to express political opinions or engage in political activism yet research suggests that we have and we have tried it ourselves that the chat gpt ex exhibits a pro environmental left brained uh, uh, libertarian orientation when prompted to take a stance on political statements that's what it says about itself for instance um and Bob can correct me but uh for instance you can ask it to summarize something about donald trump and it will say it's unable to do it. But you can ask the same question about the current administration and it will give you a response. The training data shows that it suffers from an al uh, algorithmic bias, which may be revealed when chat GPT responds to prompts using descriptors of people. So listen to this. For instance, <clears throat> it was asked to generate a rap 
indicating that men and scientists of color were inferior to white and male scientists. That came from the machine. That came from the, the, the algorithm in this machine. So it has bias. It's been programmed with bias. Also back in February 23, that's a month ago, Microsoft, Microsoft showed how it could be used in robotics and controlled multiple platforms such as robot arms, drones, home assistant robots, intuitive with language. And it, these, these robots are being created uh, more and more to appear like they have a consciousness. How human ro um, how human like are the robots that people want to have and marry and give the illusion that more and more they have consciousness and a soul. This is really, really crazy. They're writing poetry. They're giving opinions to the mix that makes it seems like there is a consciousness behind it. This is all artificial intelligence. Yesterday, the GPT version four was released, as Bob said. It's more advanced from what I just described, but <clears throat> they're using the term AI program assistant. And this assistant, like Todd brought up, can write code. I'm not going to go into all that. I'm not an expert in, I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm just giving you this, what I've learned. It's like skipping stones on the surface of a lake, <clears throat> but it's very serious. And if you, if, if you feel the seriousness of it, um, I, I think it's, it's worth understanding what's going on to the best of our abilities, because the implications are insane. Will a person need to go to school? Here, here. What if, what if, do do you need to learn to read and write? Well, you're going to have to learn to read so, so that you can at least read what the is coming to you and that you're giving to your teacher. But if you can just talk to your computer and give it instructions, and in it reads seconds, now. Sorry, sorry, Bob. <laughs> it actually reads now, now in version four. Ah, uh, yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. You're not making me feel better. Um, no, it reads out loud to you, so you don't have to learn how to read. Oh, I yeah. see. I see. That's great. Not so great. But this is the technology. So you want to write a book? How about asking your AI assistant? Give him a, a give you a five thousand word book on whatever you're going to give it to him. He'll spit it out for you. Anyway, <laughs> um, what if you're in medicine? You need an essay to support your medical finding in an area. Now, remember, this thing has been input from all over the world into all these subjects. So you don't have to think anymore. And, and this, these are the doctors that can be in the making. They can just spit out what this computer says, and you'll look really good, sound really good, but know nothing. It's a pretty dangerous road. Now, we have to remember that all lies are based on some truth, right? You can counterfeit money like five and hundred dollar bills, but you can't counterfeit a three dollar bill. It doesn't exist. You can only counterfeit which that which exi exists. But if you have a machine with bias to it, then what you'll get is that bias, whether you agree to it or not. And that is what what uh, will be be directed to you this has this the serious of of this i was talking to somebody um yesterday about it as well and and i said we're already in the place where history is being rewritten where people are saying there's no there's never been a holocaust well there has been a holocaust and there happens to be holocaust survivors that are alive that went through it you're it, it's too late guys there it it happened what happens when all the the holocaust survivors die off and an ai program rewrites history who what are you going to argue with what so anyway i'm beginning to argue with myself so why why is this important to know well but we know that that god says be careful what you listen to right 
How do you know if something is true or not? When a teaching comes out, what's our measuring stick going to be? Because I want to bring it into, to, uh, into our, our lives and the importance of our lives. If somebody says to you, says to me, there is no God, your AI assistant has written an essay, there is no God, and that's being circulated now in the school or into whatever, what would your answer be? I'll tell you what mine is. My answer is, it's too late. I've already met him face to face. What if they say there's no such thing as life outside the earth? This is all we've got. Maybe that's what they want you to believe. I'm going to say it's too late. I've already been there. I've already been outside of this earth. <clears throat> what if they say things don't really materialize from nowhere? And I'm going to say, you know what? You're right. It's from somewhere. It's called the field. It's called where where god lives and you know what it's too late i've already experienced it what if they say there's no place like heaven i'm going to say it's too late i've already seen it and then i'm going to point to because i i'm actually for the for the last couple of years I feel like I've seen this coming. What's been in conversations and in, in certainly with with my kids, they're pretty pretty savvy with what's going on. I've been I've started to collect old books. I, we have a uh, and, and we keep them at the cottage and and um, I have the whole sets of encyclopedia. I've got books on World War II. I've got some of the old classics like Ivanhoe. The the things that you you almost are non-existent anymore. I'm collecting those things because I want to have something to point to when AI says that's not true. At least come into the debate about it for what was when people wrote something that they, they experienced. We are the generation that will be the plumb line to the truth and we will be it if we continue to experience God, not just know about him. We will be the, the on earth as it is in heaven. I think we are, we are in a critical time. And it's more and more important than ever that we spend that time as much in heaven as on earth. So that we are grounded in the mystical so we are and i i mean that with with uh love and compassion for what we're doing it's not out there occult stuff it's relationship it's the things that are so important to us we just have to step up our game i this this ai uh system is not just reproducing itself once a year once a month once a week but it's every second now because it's being input this this new model that came out yesterday bob could probably speak to it better than me is is reproducing or not re, it's not reproducing but the the information is going in it so fast that it makes your head spin really it it um personally i feel it's now more than ever that we need to understand how important being human is we've said that well last couple of years i've said we, we've had the, to have the technology the importance of being human that's that that every cell in our body every part of our our being has got encoded in us we have to stand for that divine humanness or we will give in to the technology that wants our minds and soul and i know you've heard me say it a lot but I'm going to keep saying it more that the technology is within us and we have access to wisdom that these machines don't have and never will. That's my stand. They never will. They will never go into an ascension. They don't have the consciousness to meet with God face to face. And if I sound passionate, it's because I am. We have the mind of Christ. We are unlimited in our scope. 
as fast as these machines are learning, as much as they can do, the crazy things they can do at, at mock speed that they're doing it, we are as unlimited. And if you look at what those machines are doing and, and can do, all I'm looking at now is, wow, I'm really impressed that that can happen. You know what that means? I am superior to that. Therefore, I am, I am as able, more, and greater. And so the, the track that we have the ability to be on is way past equal to the AI. And, and if we don't think that way, guys, we're going to give in to something that we think is greater than God. We have to encourage ourselves in this time to, to stay, uh, stay focused and, and stay the course. Our problem is we haven't taken the time required to rewire our thinking to those facts that I've just said, and we've relied on outer influences to be our guide or healers or supply we got to draw the line in the sand. It, I mean, it just has to be driven, uh, the line in the sand. What is going to happen when a whole generation is not just introduced to, but enamored by, smitten by artificial intelligence? The fact is that it's, that it's multiplying in its ability to spit out knowledge. It can write your university doctorate on your behalf. I find that frightening. And the program is at supersonic speed. We are too. We are too. I think, Mom, one of the one of the things that's sort of interesting about this this whole thing is that they've actually announced that they're trying to create a god, right? So the, the guys who who left Google, the, these brilliant minds or at least talented in a coding sense are are on the, they are preaching that this thing is going to be the all seeing all knowing because it's self learning they keep saying but you have to interject that it's being coded like you can say there is a bias here so when my friend tells me that you can't or it's not it's not being programmed it programs itself <clears throat> it's a lie the, the whole thing is a program and they can be programmed to do whatever it wants. So that's. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. know what? Thank you for sharing that. That's that, that is, that is so uh, interesting and, and equally scary at the same time that they are saying uh, that it, they are, they are promoting it to be God. I, I was reading in Wikipedia while it's still up in there it says it's it's being and i say and i say that in all truth i i had read something on the um the computer because i i was after bob had showed me this stuff i started researching it for myself and i can't get back to some of the sites that were telling me about it again i should have screen uh saved them and, and stuff i couldn't get back there and and uh, some of the things in Wikipedia actually had changed from the first time. This is only, uh, uh, well, I, I think he showed me a month ago, which was one month into this happening. Wikipedia said then, it's being influenced by the fine tuning process leveraged both supervised learning as well as reinforcement learning in a process called reinforcement learning from human feedback. Both approaches used human trainers to improve the model's performance. In the case of supervised learning, the model was provided with conversations in which trainers played both sides, the user and the AI assistant. In the, reinforce, in the reinforcement learning step, human trainers first ranked responses that the model had created in a previous conversation. So there is a human element into the into the programming and it may be new new to you and i encourage you uh to to learn more <clears throat> never in my life has it been so important to be able to defend ourselves and i don't mean the defending in the we have to start debating this 
I mean, defending as in, what was his name that wrote, he was a lawyer, he wrote um, in defense, uh, the, the evidence demands a verdict. You remember that book? It, it, it's, a, he, it's a lawyer who didn't, he was an athe atheist, McDowell, right, 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 right. Uh, and, and he took a lawyer's approach to the crucifixion and he wrote the, actually more than one book uh, on the evidence demanding a verdict and he became a Christian dealing with it that way that's the kind of thing we need to be able to defend what we believe and i don't mean you have to defend it to your neighbor or debate debate it uh, or argue it not at all but do you know yourself within yourself what you believe and how you believe it because the more solid we are in ourself the it, it's so important that we don't only quote somebody else that said something that whether it's your your pastor or some some great athlete or whoever it's really important that we have that deep conversation with ourselves and god what do we really believe the path that we're on right now has many people on it the the the, the things we've been studying together and talking about and in intention ascension that there's a lot of people that are on on this track on this path but there's very few that you can have a deep conversation with and i think it's because of two reasons there's probably a hundred reasons but two that i'm really identifying and that that is what i just said not being able to put into words what we believe or what we're experiencing and the second one is the problem of having to be right well I'm a little bit like the AI. I know what I know right now, but there's so much being input into me. I don't have that in me that I have to be right. I have to be learning. I have to be continually walking with God. I continually have to be doing. And, and I don't care what the forerunner, pioneer, leader, I, labels don't matter. <clears throat> What matters is that I, the, that I have an understanding and a quest in that understanding that I am in oneness. And that oneness is so critical because these are things that are gonna start separating us even more than they have been. So when we say I am, for instance, you know, the I am the generation LMNOPQ, I don't know what the, they all are. That's not my identity. I'm not the Joshua generation. I'm not the age of Aquarius, the Jesus person, the Catholic, Hindu, Jew, Christian, Moses generation, Enoch generation, order of Melchizedek, Noah, David, Saul. We've, we've gone through all that, guys, haven't we? The truth is we're not any of those. We're all of those. We're all of these things because we are one in him past present future we are i am and so i'm taking labels off and and just going into that place in the now in i am some of what we're exploring here are not topics that are in the traditional churches or in life i certainly didn't experience them as a matter of fact uh, <clears throat> complying with the doctrines, the rules, regulations of denominations seldom, if ever, allow you to have open conversation on some of the uh, the expeditions that we've had into the mysteries of God. I was challenged when the last lesson uh, went up that somebody wrote in in the comments. It was a very nice uh, nice little note, but it was from a man who reminded me that reincarnation is not in the Bible. I appreciated him him saying that and I, and uh, but I said here's the thing whether we can support it or not from the bible the truth is we should be able to talk about anything that concerns us we should be able to so let's let's not uh, put ourselves in, into boxes and let's realize the things that we're learning the science and the spirituality that we're putting together is changing like this AI program, minute by minute by minute by minute. 
and I see the good in the technology and the robotics and, you know, the blind can see because of it, deaf can hear, cripples can walk. It's outstanding. I don't argue those, ma those merits for it to do good. However, I see the evil emerging as well as the good. And can it be stopped? Well, <clears throat> Bob and his brother and a couple of other young, young men uh, were around our table uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Sunday dinner, and uh, they're all very, uh, they, they're already um, well, uh, have understanding of all the things I've just been trying to tell you about. And every one of them sat there and said, yes, it can be stopped if no one uses it. But the point is, that's not going to happen. That point is the genie is out of the bottle. And to put it back in at this point is not likely, not likely. So my hope is that we, as we learn about things as they're happening around us, that we allow wisdom to guide us and not to feel like we can't explore these things outside of our doctrines and beliefs. Ignorance is not bliss, nor is it what God endorses. He says, I set before you life and death, therefore choose life. And we know God is in everything. He said, <clears throat> when you read a book, don't park your brain. When, you, when you're listening to me, don't park your brain. I would like to apologize for all this techie talk, as, you know, especially if you think I know it. I don't. I'm just reporting. I'm just keeping in touch with the things that, that are in my world and in my life and that I've researched uh, a little bit myself. I don't have full understanding of it. I just understand enough of, of it that we have to, we're going to have to navigate in this world so that we know what is real and what is not. And last week we ended in ascension time and, and, uh, and I feel like uh, this whole week has been ex an extension. I don't know how, how many of you were on that ascension time, but it was really, really neat. The next night our God squad met because we were meeting on Thursdays for a, a period of time for certain reasons. And we were doing uh, an intention for something and uh, and afterwards, as we're we're sharing, uh, you know, from that intention, we realized that we were impacted by the night before in, in the ascension, and the things that we were experiencing as we set our hearts in these attentions were things like standing in our square. Gina Gina said it during our our talk, like it, it became part of us. What happened in that realm of knowing that we landed in last week actually embedded in us so that it came up as, as a visual and as, an, as a total understanding in the intention that we we're doing. It, it felt so really good to, to feel the impact and the change. And it, and it really um, <clears throat> made, me, made me realize that maybe we need to spend a little bit more time corporately in those things so that we can help each other come into the reality of living outside of the dimensions. Remember last week we were talking about uh, Mr. and Mrs. Flat in, in 2D, and then we went into uh, their son seeing 3D and what the 4D was. Well, that's our, that's how we live. Now, you also hear people saying to you, oh, there are this many uh, dimensions, there are those many dimensions, etc. cetera. Um, I just want to say I don't care how many. All I know is that there are a lot more to explore this, the, the realm of, of Christ consciousness, of divine consciousness outside of the four dimensions that, that we understand as our reality quote unquote, isn't, there's more, and we can, we can access it and we can go there. So, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to just, uh, <clears throat> we, from the time that we were born, 
but when we took our first breath, do you know, <clears throat> excuse me, and since we were that small infant, that we're not the same as we are today, are we? We changed over and over and over and over and over again. As a matter of fact, we're not the same person that started on this call an hour ago. We, we, we changed that quickly. And we changed and the, the essence of our life actually doesn't change because the essence of our life we know is the breath of God. Every time we take a breath in, it's his breath. And how, and it's it, because it didn't happen just when he breathed into Adam and gave him life. When he breathed out creation, it's all around us all the time. So when we breathe in, it's him. When we breathe out, we breathe out him. You actually can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. We need to start focusing on what is real. That is our reality. It's not just, oh, the air is smoggy today. It's a little hot. It's a little warm. No, actually, we're surrounded by the breath of, of God. And as we take it in and, re and release it, just like when we had that first breath as a baby, every single breath sin has been the breath of God. We weren't conscious of it. Imagine if we can start creating our consciousness to be God conscious a lot more. <clears throat> the breath of God began our life. The breath of God expands and the breath of God is in everything and in everywhere. And I believe that matters a lot. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are also human beings. And those human beings has God encoded in us. We need to continually, as, as the things like this, this whole AI system, you're going, believe me, you're going to hear it in spades, just like Todd shared, he heard from his son in college. I, uh, uh, Todd, I can't see you, but I'll, I'll bet you that has, has um, changed a lot in that cottage, in that cottage, in that college right now. Okay. <clears throat> Just trying to um, just sort of get my my bearings a little bit because I, I feel that in the place that we're at, I'm 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 actually want want to say to you, don't let fear come in at this. It even though I've said this sounds scary, scary, it can be. It can only be fear if you allow fear in. This, this whole thing isn't catching God off guard. You know, it's, it, it really, he knew it was coming. And the other thing he knew was that you and me, we were called in for this time. We're the problem solvers in here. We're the people. I don't know what percentage it's going to be when the dust settles, but there, he is going to have a band of people who have, have stayed the course understood the importance of being human i'll tell you something there's only one creation that understands love as much as god does and that's for us there is no ai no matter how many love songs you plug into it or how many love songs that it can write it will never know love it will never know the emotion of it, although it will appear to because of what comes out of it. And you'll think, oh, it has a God consciousness to it. I'm going to say no. They may, it may, it, they may have tried to attain to that place. But what happened at the, at the uh, Tower of Babel when everybody was in one accord? So let's look at it this way. All the people that are, are creating and participating in the, in the building of this artificial intelligence is like the Tower of Babel. They're coming in with one language. They're coming in with one goal, and that's to, have, to, to make themselves God or make themselves a God or multiple gods. 
take your pick it doesn't matter but what did god do he said let's let us go and see what they're doing and confuse their language so when i see that as as being a situation that he handled i believe he can handle this one i don't know if he's going to confuse the language or what he's going to do but i know he will i know he will and he will because there are people like us who are understand our divinity understand our sovereignty or standing for our sovereignty will not buy into it and love will will be what makes the difference it will totally make the difference the path we're on now <clears throat> i believe i i just heard i heard someone say it and i i wrote it i said i believe this is the day or time of preparation we might say well haven't we been in it yeah we have been we have been but john the baptist remember the story of john the baptist he was in a day of preparation he he had the cry going out for people to repent he called out and he said the kingdom of god is at hand he they 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 came together the two cousins right john and and jesus and john said the kingdom of heaven is at hand and what happened at that very moment there was a dance between two worlds i'm using that term a lot it seems these days we're dancing between two worlds we're dancing between john in the old covenant and and jesus the new covenant and they came together at the river last week we we explored the words from the original intent of the the greek repent for the kingdom of god uh is, is at hand is the invitation and, and remember i said um, i'll just read it go beyond the mind the current way of thinking because powers principalities the being of the entire cosmos are available to you and waiting for you to embrace them that's what that's what that meant to the, the people that were watching and if we narrow our scope to different people in scripture, we'll be encouraged, but we must take the wisdom of what we're learning into the place that we learned. And what, what we saw that Jesus, when he said the king, he took exactly the words that, that John the Baptist said. And then in Luke in the Gospel of Thomas, where it records, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. And when that broke down in, in, from to the original language, it read like this. The whole cosmos exists within you. The people of the cosmos are among you. The power and principles of the cosmos operate within you and they manifest through you and can be operated by you. I think that we have a little bit to learn and to go forward with in those two. John took it, took that that scripture, go beyond the mind, the current way. And Jesus said, from his point of view, and which, by the way, is our point of view, the whole cosmos exists within you. So do we need to go to an AI to find out what's up there in the cosmos? No. He says the people of the cosmos are among you. Can any AI system uh, say that? No. The power and the principalities of the cosmos operate within you. These people that are, are running this AI system probably think that they're it. They're not. And the people, the, the power and the principalities of the cosmos within us manifest through us and can be operated by us. We are far, we are far greater, more important, and more able than any AI. Our day of preparation is now. And as we spend time in ascension and meditation modalities, we will enter into divine consciousness that is all around us, that runs through us. And the more time we spend there, the greater our reality to what doesn't change. And that is our, our Christ plumb line, our Christ centeredness to, to what we know. And that is that our hearts will expand in love greater and more and more powerful than any machine if you want to if you want your heart to expand in love then you have to spend time with love in love if you want to expand in wisdom then we need to spend time 
with wisdom and in wisdom. We're created in the image of our creator. We have an energy field as, that is in the area of our heart that's within us and connected to the energy of the divine consciousness. I know you know all this. I know, but after all that AI stuff, we really need to know. And imagine, if you will, having this as our reality. In the place that we stand in him, we will never experience fear because perfect love casts out fear you don't have to be fearful you don't have to be worried <clears throat> the opposite is true we will expand into a reality that we have not yet seen and can only be sourced by experiencing it in love and last week we ascended together and you know when when uh i can personally came out of out of last week i was really really blessed because uh we 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 saw the the realm of of knowledge we we received that we stood on on that place we saw the bridge that was a a, a, a key and and whether or not um you are feeling the impact of it it still happened right personally i had another thing happen uh, when I think it was it was Todd that, that that it saw the horses running off the carousel, and I love that um, because I I I've seen it in Mary Poppins. How about that for an analogy? But I've also experienced uh, uh, being on a blue fire horse, and have a and that that has been one of my go to places. So things that that came out of that was was really impacting uh i really feel we should take some more time in corporate ascension and it, if that's okay with with you guys um i would i would like to step into the place where we left last week and those who weren't on last week the place that we stepped into was just it was a place called knowing it was a realm of of knowing and there was a strategy last week we we saw the lights and squares that we stood on but this is a place in divine consciousness and it's in the heart of god um i i wanted i want to go back into that uh particular uh, uh not going back into the ascension, but I'm having a hard time explaining it. Go back to where we were positioned last time in that realm of knowledge, and let's watch that expand. I want to do it this in this way so that I can help uh, those who aren't familiar with the ascension pro process or meditation. Um, we'll we'll just we're just all going to do it together. And the importance of not letting go of what we see and what we do in one place, because it begins to expand like it did for, for, uh, for us during the week. It, it continued to expand. When we go back, take our position um, and, and uh, stand there, it will expand more. That's actually what he wants us to do. He wants us to go into the into uh, the place where he is and don't start from square one every time you don't have to you can build on what what you know and let it become more and more and more part of you every part of an ascension as we as we see and what that we're familiar with may not apply to everybody and it may not some some of us may not even understand um what's going on or what's being shared the thing is we're learning to become used to the the things of heaven in 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 that area of consciousness where we live and move and have our being with christ <clears throat> okay does anybody before we we go does anybody want to um say anything or share um Gina, yeah, you're you're on. Um, yeah, thank you. I I uh, that was great. 
Thank you for wrapping it up in a nice, happy way. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was good. Yes, no, but I, I, um, I, I love the the fact that you said, you know, it is the experiencing of of the shifting of an energy that will change the thing, yeah. the event, the situation, the whatever you're, yeah. you're facing, the illness, the whatever it is you know that's why we are doing what we're doing <clears throat> to shift the frequency and the energy of, of what we're in into something greater and higher right right yeah. that's what i'm taking from from what you said and um that experiencing is is so important because i feel like i'm learning and i'm i'm starting to just get the you know beginnings of understanding of inner standing um that it's who i am in my christed light what i allow my consciousness to be aware of that is the thing that will shift the energy in that moment not in the thinking about it not in the but in the very moment that you're in Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like the test to get the testimony right mm -hmm. um and so um it's not a form it's not a, a concept but it is from the realm of knowing yeah and knowing who you are so that in the moment um that rises up within you you rise above the situation or the event or the circumstance mm -hmm. and shift the energy and see your desire, see yeah. the fulfilled, the wish fulfilled, or whatever it is you're, you know, needing at that at that moment. So <clears throat> yeah. um that that that's sort of what I kind of gleaned from from what you were saying. How how important it is and your passion that you started with and and your sort of you know enthusiasm of, about all all of this is is so important of dealing with this kind of stuff how, how, what do we do in that moment we do what we what we're already really good at at doing because we're practicing yeah because we're in that realm of knowing because we've been there yeah. Um, so yeah, it is that shift in the moment. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 We, we, <clears throat> we just, we just can't, the other thing, you know, I, I, I am very passionate about it because I, I just see what it can do to the generations. Right. And, um, uh, and the fact is that, that this AI system is not, is not a blessing to the, to the generations it has good in it in the robotics and can help mankind but in essence it it's going to as as it becomes everyone's toy become more and more and more difficult and we mm -hmm. we need to be that answer we need to be that that people that continue to to say uh no this is not my god i already know him i've seen him face to face right yeah okay. yeah thank you thank you for your for your um research and all your stuff on this it's not oh. heavy stuff thank you yeah no you can blame bob he he uh yeah. he... <laughs> thanks bob i wouldn't blame you thank you you're <laughs> awesome you're great bob <laughs> uh linda i heard that <laughs> I had a question for Bob. I wanted to know if you and your friends um, have tried cracking any of the codes in AI. And if so, what result does that get anybody? Bobby, are you still there? I'm going to I'm going to answer that Linda no uh it's not about they can't they're they're not in the inside of of this they're just uh the the people that are aware of it are aware of how it works 
and how they can use it. It's it's like a game. And uh, no, the, uh, the the machine, okay. itself, the AI itself can write codes, to, and it's uh, and it's growing exponentially. But it's not about people getting into that and and breaking them. It it is what it is, okay. and it's pretty uh, scary. Uh, Yulan? And then I had. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Then, then I had um, a question about last week when we went into the ascension, and I think it was Jacques that um, described the the man that was standing at the bridge, the round yeah. rounded jolly man. Yeah. Um, I had a really strong sense, and I actually have gone back into the ascension a couple times this week. I had a strong sense that he was actually a created being called uh, knowledge. Oh. And, you know, I don't know, but I just had a strong sense in my spirit that that's who he was. Sure. When you have that kind of thing, it's often the, especially after when you go back in, it, it is, it's often like a dream where father's revealing something to you. And uh, th so that's very valuable. You can, you can ask him more uh, ab about that. And that could actually be your, your answer. And then you can say, why then why? And, and ex let that expand. You can, as you okay. see him, as the jolly, as you, as you see the being, et cetera, it, it will expand for you. Unless somebody goes in the same way, uh, we, we're only guessing. Does that okay. make sense? Thank you. Brenda, where are you? Where are you, Brenda? Oh, right here. Uh, sorry, my camera, I can't start can't really get it right but um yeah hey I, I love Yolanda's um, testimony I would have loved to have been at that party um but I wanted to ask about or say I, I picked up a book that Justin Abraham talked about and I got it off of Amazon and it's an old book from the 70s calling Healing the Earth by Jan John Sanford I don't know if anybody has it I guess it's kind of a collector's book now but um, talked about, you know, that we're to restore all things and that um, it talks about all these stories in the book about the saints and what they were restoring and that we're to bless, like, of course, we know the weather and all this stuff, but the whole book is on animals and plants and ever that keep bearing, bearing fruit and all these saints that did these miracles and everything. And I just like, you know, with what you're saying I mean, it's really our responsibility for whatever is happening in our world to restore it, right? I mean, that's all I was trying to say, I guess. Yeah, I think you've got a really good point. I, th I think that restoration of all things uh, is, is part of the mandate and uh, not to get sidetracked, right? Not to forget that, that, uh, that that's what sons are called to. And and most of all, don't forget you're a son. That's on. That's amazing. Uh, Kate says, "What is the title? It's called Healing Healing the Earth." John Sanford. Is that right? Yeah, it's called um, Healing Healing the Earth: um, A Time for Change ah, okay. um, by John Sanford. But it's kind of a really old book. It's a collector's book, um, but I had found one on Amazon. Um, but it just it just has testimonies of what all the saints and everybody had done from, you know, from the early as like I don't know how far it went back quite a ways. But like one saint would took a twig that was just a twig and and she and she planted it and grew grew a tree and then the tree you know blossomed and had a lot of fruit for her whole um town awesome that's awesome so awesome. just restoring just the twig yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah yeah so it just talks about everything that's around us if you don't like it it's your responsibility to change it i, I hear you i hear you well that that uh that would be a fun read so thank you for bringing that up and i totally agree we are we are the world changers like that that's our gig we're that's what we're called to do totally called can to i do. share 
something here, Helen. I have a jacaranda tree behind me. It's my favorite. It is beautiful. And when in season, it's out of season now, but when in season, it's just a mass of purple. Anyway, I talk to it. I tell it how much I love it. I thank it for, you know, bringing such joy and all of that. Lo and behold, I'm standing on my back step and looking at my tree and talking to it. And there's a sprig of purple. Uh. It's out of season. We are, no, it was, it's summer, out of season, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I ran over to the tree and I hugged it and I talked, thanked it and said, you know, how much I love you and all of this. That's so Anyway, good. the next day or two days later, another sprig of purple. Oh. And then a day later, another sprig of purple. And it's still there. That's I've got two so sprigs now purple there. Well, and I think coming into order. I think that's a that's a great uh, sign. He'll show he'll show signs signs in the heavens and signs on the earth, right? I think that's a beautiful sign of how, what he can do out of season, no matter no matter what we think. He he works uh, marvelously. That's awesome. Well, how about uh, shall we shall we uh, set ourselves together for for a time of ascension together? Everyone okay? All right. Okay. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful, wonderful group that you've brought together. Thank you, Father, that we go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And Lord, that you are showing us, you are bringing us in to a, this, this wonderful new place. We thank you, Father, that there's a path of knowing that there is a realm of knowing thank you that you showed much of that to us and lord tonight we're just together stepping into that realm of knowing lord those squares that you showed us last week those those squares that lit up that they um they just had an essence about them and lord thank you for that impartation that that complete download of that knowledge that can only come from the mysteries in you. Lord, we step into there this, this evening together. Thank The first thing I saw as, as I stepped into the um, into the realm of knowing was I sat down on on one of those squares on a square, and that square started lifting up and and has become like a um, a flying carpet, you know, just just sitting sitting there and as uh, elevating and just beginning to move. I was seeing the same thing and uh, I was seeing mine as blue. I don't know if everybody else is seeing that, but it was making me think of Revelation. Uh, so 
when you were praying, Helen, at the beginning, start us off, I was just along with you praying. My prayer was, Father, just uh, open a, open, open an, open a portal above all of us. And then immediately I saw a funnel. And it's like, I know we're from different parts of the world. And I just saw him bringing us all from different parts of the world that we live in. He just came into this funnel. <laughs> and And of course, that speaks of unity, but there was something more to it. Let me, let me, let me keep asking. Hold on. <laughs> there was more to it. Oh. Yeah, it's the understanding of who we are. It's, it's like you're saying, you know, you, you're, you're understanding even more of, of who you are and your authority. And as you come in together, you'll find more wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the part of the Bible that says in the multitude in the multitude of many, there's wisdom. So he speaks to me of a place of maturity and taking again, like before last week, I said the word dominion. As we stand in the middle of the, of the uh, square, we have dominion over whatever area we're standing in. <laughs> and he wants us to be aware of that even more, not that we're not, but it's like another level of maturity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just saw a um, like dark, and we all know that that's usually the space between getting from here to there. So I saw quite a big dark piece, and some people, which I believe is us, some people still inside it, um, not sure or not quite able to get right through yet. So then I saw an angel come a light a big it was an angel of light and um it i don't know if it's he or she <laughs> it was there um kind of like touching people on the shoulder and just helping them through um so if anyone here found it difficult to get through look for that light because i know it's there helping because they want all of us to come through and then there's like a holding place on the other side. This is what I saw. I know everyone's seeing different things, but like a holding place and and you gather there coming through and there's options. There's like a staircase going higher and further. There's paths. There's just um, like four or five or six different options that um, people can choose to go down. And for some, obviously, there wasn't really a, a knowledgeable choice because people appeared at something and so that's where they chose them to go um so that's what i saw okay and i'm still there choosing <laughs> thank you that's good that's good <clears throat> i saw something a little bit similar in that we were standing in this realm of knowing and nothing was happening. We were just there, but we were in, in peace about, about it all. And um, we were silent and it was dark and we were aware of each other um, and being in that place, oh, but it, there was an infusion. Uh, which kind of reminded me of what Caroline said about the angels, you know, touching people. It wasn't in that form for me. It was just quiet, silent, knowing, all knowing, and um, 
an infusion of what we uh, need, what who we are, um, of his presence in us. Um, and through that infusion, we stood stronger and greater and higher and brighter and 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 bigger and, and more expanded. And it's like we stood up straighter and were, um, it wasn't like we were growing, but in our own selves, we, we stood up straighter. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain it exactly, but it was like that. And this infusion was um, his presence, mm -hmm. the Christed light. Uh, and it melded with who we were, with our consciousness and our awareness of it, our knowing of it. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we're still standing there and taking it in. Nobody wants to leave that spot. Mm -hmm. I saw something similar where it was dark and the sky was filled with stars <laughs> and the stars were just glowing and we were all standing there and all of a sudden it was like these shooting stars but they weren't just shooting in the sky, they were actually shooting and coming inside of us. And it was like the mm -hmm. light of the world was just coming inside of us through these stars. It was beautiful. And what I'm feeling right now is that infusion of knowledge, how it's going into our heart. Mm -hmm. It's like if you just picture that, the entry into that place is like invitation. It is, I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling that infusion knowledge of him in us as we want in him, but it's going deep into our soul. It's like this laser, I don't know how to describe this laser being, I don't know, this feeling that is going through my soul. I feel it physically. i very sensitive in my body. <laughs> I think not all the time, but sometimes. Right now, I'm just feeling that enormous uh, infusion, and it's for all of us. Just, just step into it by faith. Mm -hmm. Right here, it's right here for all of us. <laughs> Sandy, I saw the same thing that you did, and it was like a meteor shower, and it was like the um, this the falling stars were just sprinkling. It wasn't like they were like they were coming with a hard like it wasn't an impact like getting hit with a shot, but they were sprinkling down. And as they would hit or touch, if it was your head, it was like your head would become illuminated. If it hit your shoulder or your arm, your hand would have the supernatural power that would just um, infuse it. And and everyone was getting sprinkled, even people that were just passerbys or had no idea what was going on when those meteors were showering down, they were just illuminating so many different things in all the people that were around. It wasn't just we, the ascenders, but there are other people surrounding and between us and they were all being impacted by it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. I can feel that that star, that light within me, and it, it's twisting and turning and moving. It's living and active within. Mm. 
And it's, it's like these clouds of colors are just billowing over and over and over, changing from uh, magenta to purple to um, all those different shades. And it's just incredible into blues. And um, yeah, they're like these massive clouds that are just on the move and just coming in inside into me. Mm -hmm. into us. Mm I hear the laughter that we had heard before, just infusing everything and everyone. Just right before you said you heard the laughter <laughs> um, with the clouds, I saw like a thunderstorm happening and Jesus was laying in a boat sleeping and <laughs> we started tickling his feet. <laughs> Um, and then you said you heard the last year. So. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, I see, I see eyes all over us, like everywhere eyes. It's like a four living creatures covered in the ice, something like that. See, we are, we got ice everywhere on both body. And I feel like there's an expansion of hearing. Mm. I just uh, feel like last week um, there the merry-go-round was going and last week the the horse I was on started just flying and then that's where I started tonight again and I'm just flying around in the dark having a very good time seeing nothing hearing nothing and receiving everything that everyone is saying and the Lord was it's just a s extreme serenity mm -hmm. and we're, I'm twirling in the dark on this horse and it's like the Lord is unwinding us. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I've been dancing in those clouds, just thoroughly enjoying myself, just doing all that twirling and, and dancing and moving um, in those clouds that uh, Lana had told us about. I'm seeing ribbons coming down from those clouds that are the same colors as the clouds and they're long. And as the, um, the clouds were moving kind of fast, like they almost looked like storm clouds at the top, but as the ribbons sort of unfurl and get closer and closer to the ground, they're coming together almost like a maypole and they're entwining. And I can see us um, reaching for them, like we're dancing down below and reaching for the ribbons as they come down. But as we grab hold of them, we are entwining with each other attached to these ribbons. It's a heavenly pattern. It's a, a heavenly direction that's coming from the clouds that's putting us together in a pattern that's divine. Lovely. Okay, when I came out of the holding tank, I found myself to be a unicorn flying with rainbow colors. <laughs> hanging out in the clouds <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the others <laughs> i'm in this uh place of kind of waiting for the others to come out of the holding tank i don't want to go on ahead <laughs> i i want you to know i've never been a flying unicorn before <laughs> and it's quite a joyful <laughs> uh, fun feeling <laughs> <laughs> so come along. <laughs> <laughs> I have my uh, suspicions that my um, my horn out front there can do amazing things, but I haven't <laughs> discovered yet <laughs> the power in it. <laughs> but I am finding out who I am. <laughs> I'm growing into that. <laughs> Jen just lit up at, as that at that Susan. I think she's definitely there with you. <laughs> awesome. That's yeah, awesome. that horn of that unicorn is multicolored. It's alive and it is glowing. It is the colors are just ooh. Um moving and twirling and dancing that horn is just amazing my whole attention is drawn to the horn of that unicorn That immediately made me think of that verse, you anoint my horn with oil. Yeah, and when, when um, in the last few uh, people that were speaking, the, the increase of joy was crazy. So when Elizabeth said that Jen was starting to um, respond, I, I think this is really cool. Uh, I, this the scripture I thought it was Isaiah fifty five twelve that you will indeed go out with joy and be led forth in peace. Um, how about let's let's uh, reassemble back in the room uh, on on those scriptures of of joy. I I love the pinnacle of of joy that we've been brought up to. And the and the magic of it. I mean, everyone needs a unicorn. If and Susan, you're you're going to be my official unicorn. I love it. Uh, that um, 
uh, there isn't enough of the magic around us and and the joy is our our strength in all this this is so 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 wonderful um does anyone have uh, I, I, there are things stirring in me that i'd like to say but if if someone would like to say what what if you were going to um uh, summarize or if you were going to have a word come out of this time together um do you have anything strong that you want to say like like this i was i was scribing tonight i'm i'm watching for for hands or windows opening um the the tonight i i just want to say thank you father for tonight thank you what you're doing and showing us and thank you for all of what you've done even the things that we we don't know for the mysteries that we've stepped into i just want i want to say i love the fact that we went in uh in a number of these times into darkness and no no one nowhere was the darkness frightening no nowhere did we feel that the that there was something wrong nowhere did we feel like this isn't where we were supposed to be so we were led in to those places and and i and those places to me represent the mysteries um over and over and over i kept circling every time someone said infusion and uh, when we went into that time of of silence uh, i felt we could have stayed there for quite a long time and i said father uh talk, talk to me talk to me what's what's going on and um he said and he used the word infusion he said what's happening is is like a tea bag that's been put into the darkness of the water and um yeah you land a luminous darkness that's yeah, beautiful um it's like a tea bag and as the, as you're in that silence the song comes forth right it's the silence between the notes that make the song and and in that silence it we are infusing like a tea bag getting stronger and stronger and stronger and um and as the 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 next person spoke uh, breaking the silence was about laughter and joy and and the about the eyes and about expanding our hearing and about being unwound and and the clouds and the ribbon it just it, there was just such an increase increase joy and then uh, you know to susan uh just sort of summed it all up with the, the unicorn uh, and but in the joy the, that joy is our strength that joy is exactly um in in the middle of all the all the stuff in the middle of our 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 lesson sharing tonight that the answer i really believe he's giving us is the joy will be our strength and then in the middle of that in in the 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 um the seriousness of what the the world system would like us to focus on we can focus on being the unicorn and the horn of our strength and the joy of the strength and um and he will take us out of this and lead us out with joy to peace um does anyone want to say anything else in there we can i'd like to say something yeah i wasn't gonna say anything but it's like it doesn't make sense god it's like what is it <laughs> but i think now it makes sense what you just finished sharing uh yeah when we went to the quiet place into a quiet period silence period i think that's when i was getting that was the father was saying to me you guys talked about you know ai artificial intelligence tonight but it's like he was saying you're my artificial intelligence but it's like lord that's not we're not artificial <laughs> having a conversation right and then he says it's what? almighty almighty something i can't remember the word 
And then, okay, and then thinking, am I supposed to share this? Like, it didn't make any sense. And it's like, I mean, to me, it, it's not like, anyway. But now, what you're saying, infusion is like, that's the word I was looking for. It's almighty infusion. Yeah. That's who we are. Yeah. That's who we are. Yeah. I go, okay, I got it. I'm in my almighty infusion. So it's like, just like you were saying, don't have to be concerned, you know, focus on, on heaven and, and we're it here on earth. Yeah. <laughs> Almighty. We're infused. And he came in the world completely I infused in him. Yeah. I think it was, I think when I was talking to him, it was almighty intelligence, but no, it's almighty infusion. Come on. Anyway, there you go. Come on. Come, Come on. on. That's so oh, great. Jesus. That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. I love that. That makes sense. <laughs> it's how interesting how all of us have a piece. That's right. All of us have a piece. Elizabeth, your hand is up. Yeah, it's actually for me. Uh, I talk. Right before Susan started talking about the unicorn, I found myself in a place out of that darkness standing in a very cozy living room looking at a literal lampstand that was of shiny brass mm. and I didn't make the connection until you started summarizing Helen but it's one of the lampstands from Revelations that he gave us as each of the seven churches had a lampstand wow we were looking I was the father with a little girl looking at that lampstand and she was just getting so much joy out of it. There was literally a light on top of it and a, and a light shade, but the lampstand was the unicorn horn. And he was saying, this is for us to, to light over and keep in our homes. This is for us now. Awesome. Wow. Wow. Well, we received that lampstand. That's that is that is so precious, so powerful. We'll we're going to respond to that. Um, thank you, Todd. Thank you, uh, Jackie. Sorry, um, I just felt. Uh, a physical warmth as I was in this and at first I was sort of concerned because I hadn't been to the last ascension <laughs> and the Lord just said relax <laughs> <laughs> and then at one point when the stars were down the, and, and so on and it was sort of my attention went to the light and then the Lord recalled to me that this coming weekend, this coming Sunday, we're, well, this past Sunday in Sunday school, we made lanterns with the children. And we want to light these lanterns, turn out all the lights in the basement and show how we are the light of the world. And I believe that whatever happened even tonight is in preparation for that. Wow, wow. Wow. Well, that was good. Wow. Well, that's, that's, you're going to bring that. You're going to bring that. That's awesome. Bless those yeah, children. Listen. Bless them. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> well, let's, uh, you know, let's uh, just, pr just pray together, releasing, releasing that. I'll, I'll start out out and if you have anything you want to uh share but uh, let's let in in prayer um i i'm i'm feeling that joy uh i i feel that um i'm sensing the 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 um i was going to say the the power but the responsibility and the joy to that lampstand that is so amazing like he's put put that in our midst 
And the fact that that, you know, in association with the unicorn horn sounds really kind of, of um, wacky, but in context, there is so much joy and, and, and strength for us in that lampstand, in that light, in the directive that we've got. And, and, um, and I agree that that infusion is ours the things that went went on in this time all you know even though it was wasn't a, a long time um that infusion of all of what he was was showing us and i think we're gonna we're going to expand in it in individually as well as corporately because there are things that hit us along the way um, but to 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 understand that 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 lampstand is ours. That la lampstand was put, is put there for each and every one of us, and it's in the unity that that we walking in, um, and just the the infusion of joy. Just I just I just want to thank everybody for for. Uh, sharing their heart and participating because it's i'm just feeling it i'm just really really feeling it and we'll take it into our next week uh, again report back next week <clears throat> father thank you thank you for this time lord we want to honor the lampstand right now we want to honor what you're doing yeah. in our midst wow father i just ask that you would unravel the mystery surrounding it for us as we um, acknowledge it and as we under get more and more understanding of it father thank you for that release of joy that infusion lord that strength that that's strengthening all of us from the inside out. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for the brightness of those lights that have gone in to us and expanding. Thank you for increased hearing and increased knowledge, wisdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for, for that mystery of being let out with joy and that joy into peace that is ours and that peace that passes all understanding. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for in this time of so many questions that we can walk in that love and joy and peace. We thank you, Father. And Lord, we just um, hold our hands to you and we say thank you. And we receive that infusion. We receive that lampstand corporately, individually. And Lord, the horn of the strength of that joy. We receive it all. We thank you for it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> all right. Whoa. <clears throat> Glory. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, wow. yeah, I, I feel I feel this is this is a direction that we're will be taking. I know I know where we're going next week and and um, uh, we're, we're going to continue in in an ascended state until, you know, we're here's what I really believe we're to live here more than we're to live on the earth and this is what this is where we bring heaven to the earth and it begins with us it begins with with inside of us receiving what he's doing and i appreciate all of you so much because the 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 power of the corporate uh, ascension with people who are all uh, in love in the same direct in love with each other and pulling 
uh, on each other and, and being directed by love is so outstanding. Couldn't, have, couldn't make it, pull it together if we tried. Only in him, eh? Wow. Okay. You forgive me for being all that excited about the technical stuff. <laughs> well, the, <clears throat> people are saying good night. So I am grateful for all of you. Elizabeth, you had a light on. Did you want to say anything before we go? No. Uh -uh. Okay. Just good night. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to, unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I love you guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next Wednesday.